What's up everyone, back again with the next Monotype video for the Crown Tundra DLC. Uh, today I'm playing some Mono Poison, which has always been one of my personal favourite types. It's kind of what actually got me into competitive Pokemon in the first place, uh, which is, I suppose, interesting, or maybe not fact about me. But with that, um, let's jump into the team and discuss it. So first off we have uh, Toxapex. So Toxapex is a really good physically defensive wall on the team. Uh, paired with Slowking, it makes a great regenerator core, because one is extremely physically defensive and one is extremely special defensive i can pivot around a lot of um big threats in the tier uh, so we are just max hp and max defense with a bold nature just to be able to take as much physical punishment uh, as toxic effects can possibly take it is also my main source of toxic spikes on the team uh, which is super important and something the team really revolves around trying to wear my opponent down with that and um kind of position them with uh, likes of future sight uh, we have Scald as well to potentially spread burns on a lot of like physical attackers. It makes Toxpex an even bigger physical wall and really threatens our physical attackers to basically not want to stay in against Toxpex at all. Even on non-physical attackers, the small bit of shit that Scald can do with burn is super nice, especially if they're not toxic from being poisoned at themselves, if they, if they levitate, if they fly, if they're steel type, all of which can't be affected by toxic spikes. Or my toxic spikes aren't down, being able to spread that burn is quite nice. We have Recover as well just for extra longevity because Toxpex wants to be able to stay on things and kind of wall them out for as long as possible. And as well as that, we have Haze to stop uh, Pokemon setting up like Dragon Dances, Swords Dances, Nasty Plots, whatever they might want to set up. Um, Haze kind of just cancels that and lets my team um, live much nicer. And finally, we have Black Sludge as the item again for a bit of longevity. And if they want to trick it, if they want to steal it or anything like that, they will take damage from non-poison type, if they're non-poison type. So if you are running poison types, I highly, highly recommend always running Black Sludge, never leftovers for that exact reason. Next up we have Slowking, Galarian form. So Galarian Slowking is new to the Crown Tundra and I am not disappointed one bit with it. It is ridiculously specially defensive. As we can see here with a calm nature, max HP and max special defense. And it's 350 uh, special defense, but that is not taken into account its assault vest. With its assault vest as well, it hits I think 475 special defense with 394 um, HP, that's just so specially defensive. And it doesn't even need any active recovery because thanks to Regenerator, it will get recovery from swapping out. So this can easily live so many special hits in the tier. It can even, I believe, swap in on Life Orb, Sheer Force, Landorus, kicking Earth Powers, and can revenge kill with Ice Beam. So Ice Beam is really good for those um, ground types in the tier, for the dragons in the tier, maybe like Hydreigon, who are specially attacking, uh, maybe a special Dragapult. This thing can even live like Dark Pulses, Shadow Balls, all that kind of stuff because special defense is just so immensely high. Next up we have Scald, much the same reason as Toxapex. Uh, if the opponent wants to swap into a physical attacker to deal with my Slowking because it can wall so much special attacks, they do run the risk of uh, being Scald burned while swapping in, so that's really important. Uh, we have Psy Shock, which is really good for just dealing some immediate damage as well as that. It's hard to wall this thing out with special attacks, because special defense, I mean, sorry, because Psy uh, Shock hits your physical defense, not your special defense, which is actually really good for special attackers. And finally, we have Future Sight. Now, Future Sight is really good for kind of controlling the battlefield. It kind of dictates when and uh, who my opponent can swap into. So say if they have a Dark type, I know, oh, they're going to have to swap into this Dark type this turn to eat the Future Sight. Otherwise, their Gengar, for example, might, might die to it. So that's a really good um, tool to kind of control the battlefield. As well as help me get up Toxic Spikes, because if I get up a Future Sight, and then the Toxic Spikes, they can't really swap into their Poison type uh, without having to eat a Future Sight and potentially getting KO'd from it. Next up we have Nihiligo. Now traditionally Nihiligo at Choice Scarf would have been my favourite set, but I've really been sold on a Power Herb set recently. I started trying it out and I have to say I really, really love it. Um, so what the Power Herb set does is it lets it use Meteor Beam, which is a one turn charge move that also increases your special attack. So the Power Herb will instantly charge Meteor Beam, increase Nihiligo's special attack and um, potentially get a beast boost with the KO. Now I expect my special attack to be one point lower than my speed, so every time my Lego gets a KO, it gets one speed instead of one special attack. Um, it will get a speed for a KO thanks to Beast Boost, and already has the plus one special attack from Meteor Beam, and the rest I just pumped into special defense for it to be able to hit and uh, take some kind of more specially orientated hits, which is pretty good in general. So um, beyond that, we have Sludge Bomb. 
um, which allows me to hit things super effective like grass types, fairy types, which surprisingly my team doesn't have too much poison coverage, so it is nice to have that. We have Dazzling Gleam, which is really good for dragons and dark types and fighting types, and more specifically, dark dragon types looking at Hydreigon, or even uh, dragon fighting types like Komoo. So I can click Dazzling Gleam, it kind of starts the KO process, especially after a Meteor Beam, I have plus one special attack, which should be enough for Dazzling Gleam to KO most dragons or dark types in the tier. And the speed keeps increasing, allowing me to outspeed even things like weather boosted speed Pokemon. And finally, we have Power Gem. So flying types can be kind of annoying for my party, as well as to an extent fire types, but uh, Power Gem really does great work. It does absolutely uh, burst in through those because it allows me to snowball into a more offensive threat. Um, and it doesn't have the one turn charge and Meteor Beam has. So next up we have Crobat, and Crobat is gonna be kind of a physically defensive Crobat uh, with a lot of HP investment and impish nature. So it's kind of more of a supportive Crobat with the likes of Taunt and Roost, um, and Taunt and Toxic, sorry, are really good for shutting down opponents like Walls. I can taunt them to stop them from recovering or potentially stop them from um, spreading status conditions on my team or substituting. As well as that, I can Toxic them and put them on a timer. This is especially really good for things like um, Galarian Corsola, who my team kind of struggles with because I don't have knockoff or even Chansey, for example, it's really good against things like that and often forces out swap outs. Next we have Roost for longevity, which is really good because it actually has a lot of HP and can eat um, a lot of moves, especially on the physical side. And finally Brave Bird, which is just good for doing that bit of damage, especially if they're low um, from Toxic, I can finish them off with Brave Bird. We have Infiltrator as an ability, which is super good because my team does not like substitutes one bit. So we need that um, ability to go through substitutes, so maybe like a sub can mind. Suicune, for example, I can toxic them through their substitute, I can taunt them through their substitute, and then I can continuously roost off the damage they're doing to me. We have heavy duty boots so we can continuously swap in on stealth rocks without a care in the world, which is really good for a flying type. And finally, EV wise, uh, why I have 88 speed is to hit 318 speed, which outspeeds things like Curum by one point, uh, especially sub Curum if they're max speed for some reason. It's really good to be able to toxic them uh, when they substitute or if they're already in substitute. And then I can spam Roost on their freeze dries. And because I lose my uh, flying type in that turn, the freeze dry shouldn't KO. Though it does open that for earth power, so I can kind of like. If I can read well, I can juggle between um, Roost and Brave Bird, depending if they're going to go for Freeze Dry or Earth Tower. Now, it's not just Curum, 318 speed is a generally good uh, speed tier, which allows me to hit a lot of kind of mid speed Roosting Pokemon, um, subbing Pokemon. So, next up, we have Skunk Tank. Uh, Skunk Tank is really good against the Psychic types in the tier, it's really good against the Ghosts in the tier. As well as that, it's quite bulky, hitting 409 HP and um, having an okay 313 attack, not the best considering it's a brave nature. Now why is it brave nature you might be wondering, why do you have minus speed? The reason for this minus speed is because I'm actually running Burning Jealousy. So what Burning Jealousy does is my opponent boosts that same turn, for example, they want to Dragon Dance, they want to Sword Dance in my face, they actually definitely 100% guaranteed to be burnt from Burning Jealousy, as well as it just being like Fire Typing, which is good for dealing with Steel Types like Ferrothorn, like Aegislash and other Steel Types in the tier, which kind of annoy me. Now on top of that I have Sucker Punch, and Sucker Punch kind of uh, baits my opponent into wanting to boost my face. So they may be thinking, he's going to Sucker Punch this turn, I'm going to try Swords Dance and get the jump on him. And if I read that, I can click Burning Jealousy that same turn and get the burn on them um, while they try to boost in my face, which is just really good. As well as that, I have Toxapex as well to haze away the old boosts. Next up we have Defog, so Defog is kind of a last ditch effort on the team. I don't want to be Defogging too much because I like my Toxic Spikes too much, I like my Stealth Rocks from Nidoking quite a lot in this team to be Defogging by my own hazards. But on the off chance they're running something like maybe Sticky Web and my team really really hates it. Or they're running like 3 layers of Spikes and my team really doesn't like getting weird away like that. I have Defog um, for important situations like that. And finally, we have Poison Jab, which is just generally a bit of a poison stab on the team because I only have um, Sludge Bomb from my Illigo. Other than this, so I definitely needed some Poison Stab. We have Aftermath as an ability, which is really good for dealing with things like maybe like Darmanitan, especially if they want to go for a Flare Blitz for some reason. 
Um, I don't know why they wouldn't go for Earthquake. Maybe I have Crobat out and they're afraid. I'm going to go into Toxapex. I don't know, just an example. Or any other kind of like recoil Pokemon or just generally physical attacking Pokemon in general. The aftermath make them take one quarter HP of their max HP when Skunk Tank faints to a physical move, which is really good for wearing down opponents on top of the toxic spikes damage I have, on top of potential burn damage, on top of potential sucker punch that same turn. Uh, this can go a long way to KOing an important threat. And finally, we just have Black Sludge for longevity. And last but not least, we have Nidoking. So why I have Nidoking here is it's going to be a premier wall breaker on my team. It has okay special attack. It doesn't look too impressive when you look at its physical attack. Like, it has a lot more physical attack. Why do I want a special attack in set? Well, it's because with Sheer Force and Life Orb, it gets massive boosts to move like Flamethrower, Ice Beam, and Earth Power, which are all really, really powerful, especially Earth Power. Coming off Stab can break through walls like uh, Steel types, like opposing Poison types to really give my team a lot of hassle because they can easily eat up my Toxic Spikes. We have Ice Beam then for the Flying types in the tier and the Ground types in the tier, and Flamethrower then for the Steel types in the tier, especially things like Ferrothorn, who can easily eat my Earth Power. And finally, Stealth Rock, just again to put that more bit of pressure on the opponent by preventing them from swapping out too much without taking that extra chip. So we're going to pause there, get some games, and hopefully uh, we'll go well. I'll be right back. So we have a game against Mono Water. Um, this one can go either way. I'm very happy to see a Kingler on the team. I have to point that out. He is a cool Pokemon and definitely deserves more love. Um, though in this game, we definitely have to worry about Seismitoad. It can be a bit of an issue. Uh, the fact I don't have like a Moongus or anything on the team can make this kind of difficult. We're going to put a Pex here, I think. As they go Barry Scudo, it kind of lets me get a Toxic Spikes down turn one. Now they can easily go into Pelipper here and defog away my um, my spikes. As they go into Finiu, I guess can just as easily defog away the spikes. With that, I think I go into Skunk Tank and try to pick Poison Job. As they go into Kingler, great play there putting up the Misty Terrain so they can go straight into Kingler. Uh, I'm going to jab here just to hopefully get a bit of damage off. As I should live, that did a lot of damage. So between Sucker Punch and Aftermath, I will get the KO, which is pretty nice. As that is a pretty big threat to my team taken care of. And it opens up Nihiligo a bit more in the end game, who I'm actually going to go into right now. As they go in Barrascuda, so I have to go into Pax here. Otherwise I risk losing a very important Pokemon to my team. Now Pelipper is a huge issue for me. I can't deny. Actually, this is a pretty big issue as well. I think I go into Slowking. I should be able to eat relatively well. Yeah, that doesn't do much. Hopefully my Psy Shock breaks the sub. Though it might not. It does. They unfortunately crit me, but this turn they're going to eat a Future Sight as well as my Psy Shock, so that should do a good load of damage to them, whatever it wants to take in. They go into Pelipper, which might actually die to that. The crit helped me a lot there. Unfortunately, I just missed out on the KO, but I'll Future Sight here again. It limits things like uh, Barrascuda coming in. I don't think you can want to KO me. Maybe Surf can in the rain? No, it actually does very little. So they're poison as well. Um... Oh, because the Misty Train comes up after the spikes, which is really good for me. So they take in Toad and eat a Future Sight. Unfortunately, this thing is going to be pretty hefty, so I'm going to go into Crobat. Expect maybe an Earthquake to come out. And let's click Brave Bird here. As I take care of Pelipper, which is pretty good for me. Now, Barrascuda is still kind of scary, especially if it runs Psychic Fangs. I've lost my Skunk Tank swap into that. As Skewda comes out. I go in Pex. I should live. As they flip turn into this. Now I think I'm willing to sack Neo King and Scout if they Earthquake, which they do. So with that, I'm going to go into my Crobat and Roost. As they actually end up Earthquaking again. And giving me the game. So we're going to pause there till we find the next one. We'll be right back. So we have a game against Mono Psychic. Um, which is definitely a tough for my team. Especially Lele is quite strong as well as Victini. So 
I definitely value Toxic Spice a lot in this game to chip away the Lele and the Victini, as I said. Uh, but it's going to be hard getting these up. I'm going to open Toxpect and try. As they open up with Bronzong, which kind of helps me because it lets me get my spikes down uh, relatively easily. They go into Mesprus. Hmm. I go Slow King here. I should be able to eat a couple of Psychic Attacks as they T-Wave me. Now, unfortunately, there's not much I can do back to them. My Nido King does outspeed, which is pretty good. As they go into Bronzong, I get the burn, which is nice. I think Nihiligo in this game is pretty good, assuming I can set up uh, with a Meteor Beam. So on the Bronzong, I'm going to risk going to Nido King to try to get a Flamethrower off as they Gyro Ball. Thanks to the burn, they don't do too much damage, and I'm actually going to try to get my rocks up to chip away things like Victini. And the Flamethrower should probably KO, if not uh, damage them heavily. So just shy of a KO, unfortunately. But my Nido King is healthy enough to come back in on the rocks later in the game and hopefully take care of something like a, a slow down Victini or potentially re nucleus As Alakazam comes in, it's probably going to go for Psychic, so I'm going to go to Skunk Tank. As they go for Shadow Ball, good play. Uh, thankfully, it doesn't KO, but they do get the defense drop, special defense drop, which is unfortunate. I'm going to click Burning Jealousy in case they want to go for a counter. I just want to chip them that tiny bit as they go into Mesprit. Um, I'll go Nido King on the off chance you want to try to wave me again as they get a Reflect up. So this is okay with me. I can click Flamethrower here and get up some damage, which is not bad. It's strange to go hard into Renucleus because now I get an Earth Power off. It won't KO, but it'll do a good chunk of damage. Ooh, they're recovering that quite well as Mesprit comes back in to get up a light screen. Good play. So this is looking kind of scary for me as they can probably take out the Renucleus soon and win the game. But they don't have a psychic attack, which means I'm tempted to take a Nihiligo and click Meteor Beam and try and commence a sweep. Now, because of their light screen, it's possible Reunucleus might live this. But this does not let them get in something like Victini as they take in their Lele. Interesting, because I can just click Sludge Bomb here. And they live thanks to the light screen, unfortunately. This is not good for me. So I'm going to have to go into Scum Tank. And click Poison Job. If they're Choice Locked, they have to swap out here and they will die to Stealth Rock uh, when they come back in. Which is pretty good for me. And I also got rid of their ability to get up screens. Nice. So that is a huge threat to the team taken care of. Unfortunately, I cannot get up a Sucker Punch because of their Psychic Terrain. But the fact I still have my Slow King healthy is pretty good in the endgame. Victini is definitely the biggest issue, but I think my Pex can wall that out. Which we're about to find out. If they Zen Headbutt here, great play, but I expect a V-Create. As they Ball Strike. Very good play. So now I have to decide what's the most expendable member on the team. Because I need Pex to be alive and healthy for this. And I think I want to keep Skunk Tank alive. I guess Crobat's the most expendable member. In fact, because I'm physically defensive, I actually end up living one, which is quite nice. Because this opens up me to be able to click Sucker Punch against this. As the terrain will go down after this turn. I will roost here in case they decide to swap out. Which they do. Which is okay with me. I'm going to taunt them so they can't recover. As they go into Zam. So on Zam I'll go into Skunk Tank. It's opening up that my... Sucker Punch should be able to hopefully win the end game soon. They go for a Shadow Ball again, doesn't do too much damage, and they don't get this death drop this time. I'm going to click Burning Jealousy just on the off chance they went for counter. 
And the reason I did that is so I can break their probable sash. And Zam is down, which is a big threat to my team. They take in Victini again. I always sack Crobat to this. Actually, I didn't need to at all. That was a very bad play. I just realized I could just sucker punch straight up. So I take my skunk tack back in and sucker punch. Now the renucleus could be very hard for me, and the fact I sacked my my tox effects is a very bad play on my part. Jab might be able to do enough. Oh, that does nothing. And the iron defense. This is looking very scary. Though there's a potential that they're just mono uh, psychic attack, in which case I can wall them out basically infinitely. I guess we're about to find out. It looks like they're probably just stored power. Now, unfortunately, it's going to be kind of hard to get all these raids right because I'm going to have to try to stall out their PP. But obviously, my Slow King and Toxapex are in danger of being KO'd. So as long as I keep taking in Toxapex, I think they have to store power me. Otherwise, they run the risk of me clicking Haze. I'm going to jab here as they probably expect me to go back into Pex. I'm just going to have to outplay the PP for a while, I think. I don't even think a Sucker Punch crit would KO this position. Is that slower than Pex? I think it's actually slower than Pex. That could be really good for me. As I should be able to just take in this and click Haze. Hopefully they don't have any speed. EVs. In which case, I should outspeed this. And I think spamming Haze and Scald should kind of win the game. See, I'm just going to spam Haze. I don't see a position where they can win. It's going to take up too much PP to try and stall out the Pex. And then they can't do anything to my Skunk Tank. So I can potentially get to the stage where they have to struggle. That stored power does so much after one boost. So I'm going to click recover here. And just spam Haze every turn they want to try and boost up. As I should have enough PP. I have 40 PP. And they are quickly running out of those. So my apologies. This is going to be a very, very slow game. Um, I will timestamp below the next one. If you want to skip this. So I can just click Haze every time. Between Haze and Scald, I should have enough PP to wall them out, as I said. And the fact that I can take a Skunk Tank at any point and just completely wall them out is quite good. And they end up forfeiting, so we're going to pause there until we find our next game. I'll be right back. So we have our next game against Mono Ice. Now this is looking like a pretty scary team. Things like Darmanitan are actually um, very threatening to my team. I definitely value Toxic Spikes in this game a lot. Uh, but as well as that, they have like Kyurem, who's quite scary. Hmm. I'll open up a Pex here as they open up Aurorus. I'll try to get my Toxic Spikes down, but I expect maybe a Veil to come up. If they click Freeze Dry, good play. As they go for a T-Wave. So that's okay with me. I think I value my spikes down a lot. They can easily rapid spin it away with Avalug, but if they give me Avalug, that's pretty big for me. And they go for an Earth Power. We'll slap into Sloking here and click my Future Sight. As I want to keep my pecs healthy for things like their Manitan. As unfortunately they missed their T-Wave again. That really sucks for them. Now a quick future sight here, as I'm fully powered, I suppose that only is fair after I avoided two in a row. They get up their stealth rocks. And here a part of me wants to swap into Nido King. But I think it's a bad play, but I'm going to do it anyway. I might live one Earth Power. As they go for Blizzard, great play on their part. I really did not expect that to come out. They probably expected a Crobat, so maybe I should have played more carefully. 
I click Scald here. Just to try and set up a Nihil Ego, because I think Nihil Ego is uh, my win condition in this game. As the future side comes out. Hmm. I think if I can set up, like, a Meteor Beam, I'm in a very good position to win the game. So what I'm going to do is try and sack my Skunk Tank. So that I can get in my Nihil Ego and start a sweep. It could go quite badly, as I actually end up outspeeding, which sucks for me because I really did not want to do that. I probably shouldn't have clicked Poison Jab, maybe Defog was the play there. We're going to take in Pex, as Pex should be able to wall out most of what they throw my way. Besides maybe Curum. I do outspeed Curum with Crobat, thankfully. By one point. As they're taking Glass Tree, Glass Tree? I'm not exactly sure to pronounce that, so I apologize for butchering that name. And their high horsepower does a ton. What? Scald did zero. That did zero damage. That must be Assault Vest. As they missed the crash. I think I'm willing to sack my Crobat. Just to try and get as much ship as possible on this. As they end up forfeiting. I definitely did hacks them there, but we do take those wins regardless. So I'm going to pause to find the next one and I'll be right back. So we have a game against an opposing mono poison, which is pretty scary for my team. I definitely value Slow King so much in this game, as well as Nido King. I think are my two biggest assets, as well as Night Ego, I suppose. Now I can't unfortunately get Toxic Spikes down, so I'm going to have to play this one quite carefully. I think we're going to open up with Slow King, as they open up with Drapion. I'll go into Scum Tank on this and hope they don't have Earthquake. Actually, I'll go Night Illegal. I mean Crobat, sorry. I'll go Crobat. They could knock me off, which is okay because this team looks like they don't have Stealth Rocks, unless the Night Illegal runs it. And popping their balloon would be nice, as they go into Pex. Now they probably go for a Scald, I'm going to taunt them. As they indeed go for a Scald, it does very little damage. I can roost this off nicely enough, but I'm going to go into Slow King here. And click Future Sight. So Drapion can definitely come out here, as Amoongus comes out. Presumably wanting to Spore. So I'll go Crobat on the Spore. And then I can get in Nido King. So they have to take in their Drapion here. If they don't want to eat a future site. And I get the good position of having in my talk specs against this. There's probably no way they let me scald this. As it pops their balloon and runs the risk of them being burnt, which really incapacitates them for the rest of the game. Popping their balloon is quite good because it opens up uh, Nido King a lot. But as I said, I think Nihiligo is very good here uh, if I can start this sweep. They don't have quite the same specially defensive backbone as I do with my Slow King. They go into Amoongus. Um, I'm not sure what Amoongus can do against Nido King. Gigadrin did a lot, but I get my rocks up here. Rocks would be quite helpful. But it slowly chips them away and potentially forces them to defog with their wheezing. Which gives me an opportunity to set up a Night Illegal. So they Gigadrin again. I think I value HP on my Nido King too much, so I'm going to go Slow King. Uh, click Future Sight. And on the turn Drapion might come in, I'll try to click Scald to burn. As a Weezing comes in. I'll side Shock here. On the Defog. Now I think Drapion comes in, so I'm going to try burn here with a Scald. The fact I get the Balloon in the first place is pretty good for me. No burn, unfortunately. But I can always go to Pex on this as they knock off my Black Sludge. So this game is looking kind of difficult, I won't lie. I think with good use of Slow King, I can definitely win. We do the same here. We click Future Sight on Drapion. And Slow King, sorry. 
As Foul Play does a good chunk of damage, but Psyshock should do a lot here. Now they pretty much have to swap into Drapion. Again, taking a bit of chip, risking the burn, which came out this time. Great for me. Ooh. Nido King is very scary for my team. I kind of forgot how scary Nido King is. I'll try Scald on the Earth Power, as unfortunately when it KOs. I'm going to have to risk a speed tie here, I think. As they win. Are they Choice Scarf? Or do they just win the speed tie? We'll click Psy Shock here. It unfortunately does not KO. As I go into Crobat. It puts me in a position where Nihiligo is looking better, though. Though Toxapex is still a huge issue to my team. So they are not Choice Scarf. That I can confirm. I think Power Gem KOs here, but I'm going to run a quick calc just to make sure. Nido King. Power Gem is 25 to 30. Yeah, that's a KO. As they go to Pex. So the fact that it's so much means Meteor Beam is really, really good against this team. I'm going to click Meteor Beam now. Hopefully they don't go for a Haze. If they do, fantastic play. If they don't, I could potentially win the game here. As they go for a Scald. They get the burn, unfortunately. But my Power Gem is looking more and more powerful. I click Sludge Bomb. As the Power Gem is a roll. Good Baneful Bunker. I think I have to just go for sweeps here. They do outspeed as they are to Scarf, unfortunately. I go into Nido King. That's how he's Slow King. Um, and I get up a future side here. Drapion comes in. With Drapion, I always go into Scum Tank. Does decent damage. I click Jab here. As Pex comes in and dies to the future site. So Nido King is still looking kind of scary here. My Nihil Ego doesn't live too much longer, unfortunately. Weezing comes out and presumably wants to go for a Will-O-Wisp. So I'll try to get in my, uh, my Sloking, my bad. I'll get it right one time this video. Drapion comes out. I always go Skunk Tank on this, I think, actually. I click Future Sight. They get rid of my Assault Vest. But I get in Skunk Tank. Which means they can't really swap out here. They eat the future site easily. But their knockoff's gonna do nothing now to me. Now they can go to King. I think I sack Nioligo to this. Take out Skunk Tank and go for a Sucker Punch. If they read this great play, they go into Weezing, great play. So this is looking kind of scary for me. I click Future Sight. Future Sight pretty much guarantees a KO again. The fact I'm missing my Assault Vest is probably a bad play. As I might need it to survive Nido King's Earth Power. How much did it do with Vest on? Hmm. I can't remember what turn it was. Let me look it up. Earth Power. 44 with Vest. So let me do a quick damage calc here. Slow King. Earth Power does, yeah. Now without Vest. With 63 to 75. So I have to sack my Skunk Tank here. Click Psy Shock and hope to live one hit from my Illegal. The fact that Scarf means I think I can live but it's going to be tough. Uh, unfortunately, we die. So the fact I got rid of my Assault Fest was a terrible play on my part. If I didn't do that, the game would have been mine, but we learned from these. So we're going to pause we find the next one. We'll be right back. So we have another game against Mono Water. I think it's the same guy from earlier. So um, he replaced the Kingler with Lapras, which is sad to see, but understandable. So we're going to 
lead off with Pex, I think, again, and see how this goes. So Barry Skewda opens up, and we get our spikes down. It's quite nice for later in the game, as they go straight into lap rares. Presumably wanting to go for a freeze dry here, so I'll take in Slow King, and click Future Sight. They go into Pelipper, and that's okay with me. I think I'll just click Shock here. They defog away my spikes. I'm okay with that, I get a lot of damage on Pelipper here, and whatever comes out eats a Future Sight here. Hmm. I'll try to get the burn as they swap here. Their rain will end this turn though, which is pretty good for me as they go into Toad. A burn here would be fantastic. Unfortunately, I don't get it. I go to Crobat as I should be able to live a liquidation easily enough. As I am bulky, and the future site takes the KO. And they end up forfeiting, so we're gonna pause there until we find our next game. We'll be right back. So we have a game against Mono Dark. Uh, in this game, I'm absolutely terrified of Moltres because I saw how much damage it can do in my lives. So that's definitely quite scary. As well as that, as Urshifu can be a bit of trouble to my team. We're gonna open up a Pex, uh, try get spikes down as early as possible as they go straight for an earthquake. That does a lot of damage. I go to Crobat even though I know a Rock Blast or Stone Age might be coming out as they go into Hydreigon. I'll try Toxic this. Based on that damage, it's Scarf, but unfortunately they got the flinch on me. Now, Dazzling Gleam looks pretty good in this game. So I definitely want to try to keep my Nihiligo nice and healthy. I'll try Recover here. Please don't flinch. Oh my. Not good. This forces me to take out my Skunk Tank, I think, to get the recovery. And I'll just click Poison Jab here. As Crook comes out. We'll try go Crobat here, though I expect them to guess that and knock me off. As they go for a Stealth Rock. And I do outspeed, so I'm gonna click Brave Bird. And just miss out on the KO, unfortunately. As they taunt me. Hmm. I'm scared of that Hydreigon, it's a crushing nightmare. The Moltres is a big issue for my team too, so I definitely need Nihiligo uh, quite healthy for that. Hydrogen comes back out. I think I'll go to Slowking here, while it might be a Draco Meteor. If they Dark Pulse, they go straight for a U-turn. So my thought process there is if they decided to Dark Pulse, I would have lived and got my HP back with a Generator. Now this thing is very scary. They go straight for Wicked Blow. I wonder... It's probably Scarfed or Banded, which means I can hopefully click Gleam here. Nice, so I pick up a KO on Urshifu, which is pretty good, as T-Tar comes out. Now T-Tar is a huge issue for my team. Nido King should outspeed, so I think I want to keep that alive. I'll sack. I'm going to slack my Slow King to get Regenerator on my Pex and hopefully recover. Wait, is that Banded? How much did it do turn 1? That could have been a very bad play on my part. I did 59, so yeah, that was a pretty bad play. I could still potentially win with Nihiligo. And I'm going to go ahead and click Ice Beam here as Grim Snarl comes in. So they definitely set up their screens, which is not good for me. So I think I kind of need to stall their screens out for a few turns. They can't T-wave me. Oh, but they can Spirit Break me, which has a lot of damage. Hmm. So I go to Nihiligo here on the Spirit Break. And the reason I went Nihiligo there is because I didn't want it to get... Um, I didn't want it to get... Paralyzed thanks to Thunder Wave. Now unfortunately they're probably like clay, which means... I'm not going to be able to want to KO this. Yeah, there's no way it does Gleam KOs here. Short of a crit, maybe a Meteor Beam crit will KO, which it doesn't. So we end up losing this game and we're going to be right back. GG. 
so here we have a game against Mono Ghost. In this game, I absolutely love Toxic Spikes because they're not running Gengar. Shut down as early as possible. It does great pressure in my opponent, especially with the likes of Skunk Tank and Needle King as a Warbreaker on the team. So we're going to open up the packs here as they open up with Dragapult. Now, unfortunately, if they go straight for a Dragon Dance or a sub, it could just cost me the game. I'm going to risk a Toxic Spikes here. I think Skunk Tank should be able to, to live one as they go for a U-turn. Unfortunately, they crit me, um, but they don't reveal much outside of that. They go into Sableye. Now, because I have a Dark type, they can't burn me because Prankster will be ignored, and they can't taunt me either. So I'm going to go for a Poison Jab here and try to get a bit of damage off on anything. If they go into Ultra Slash, I could potentially click Burning Jealousy as they stay in. And they let me do some damage. Unfortunately, I didn't do much, but if I poison this, it's really good for me in the end game. As they cannot will a wisp beam because of my dark type. And I'm willing to stay in here and just click poison jab because their knockoff isn't doing too much. Now, as expected, they went into Aegis Slash here. I'm going to click Burning Jealousy in case they want to go for a Swords Dance. They go for a King Shield. So that is good to know. They could be uh, potentially sub toxic. I'll click Burning Jealousy again. It does not allow them to click their Swords Dance, and their Shadow Ball shouldn't do too much damage. And if they choose to go into Blade Form and attack me, the Burning Jealousy should do a decent amount of damage. So I think I'm in a pretty good position here, as I wait for my opponent. Uh, Corsola is definitely an issue for my team, which is why I th need think I need to keep my Needle King healthy, as it should be able to wall break it as they go into Dragapult. So because they're poisoned, they're actually on a timer, and I can just click Sucker Punch here and pick up a KO, nice. Now unfortunately I lost my Black Sludge to the knockoff, uh, which isn't the best situation for me. But still in this position, um, I think it's okay. I feel like Slow King is kind of expendable in this game, but I could use him to pivot around on certain Pokemon as they take in Mimikyu. And they go straight and attack me. I have physically defensive packs to wall anything it throws my way. As they go straight for a play rough, I'm just going to throw out a Scald here. Um, if they do Swords Dance, I can haze the next turn. And as I said, I'm physically defensive, so outside of a crit, it shouldn't do too much damage. And if they are Life Orb, they'll be taking Life Orb and Poison Chip, which will very quickly wear them away. So they go into Sableye. Presumably wanting to try and taunt me, um, but in case they want to recover, I'm going to try get a second layer of Spikes down. Which is exactly what happened. Quite good for me. Now in this position, hmm, I think I always go skunk here. They are poisoned, though I don't think my jab will do enough damage. And they have a lot of PP left in knockoff. Though this does eventually force them to recover, uh, so I guess I could just stall out their recover PP. Though that could take some time. Unfortunately, Slow King is pretty useless in this situation. Um, Nihiligo is looking pretty good, especially if I can weaken them somewhat more. I can click Meteor Beam and I should pick up a KO. I don't want my Needle King to be knocked off because I think I value every bit of damage I can get against Corsola. So I'm just going to click my Poison Jab again. As I said, they're forced to recover every second turn, so I should have just about enough PP to wear them away as they go for a knockoff again. In fact, if I can sucker punch them on a turn they're going to go for knockoff, um, it'll do a lot more damage and hopefully pressure them some more into having to recover. That did so much. Unfortunately, it won't knock out because of their leftover recovery, but it does really put the pressure on them. And they're forced to recover here again, actually. So for every Sucker Punch I get off, I can get a good bit of damage. I think they recover here again. And they only have 9 PP left, so unfortunately this is going to be a small bit boring to watch the PP stall. Um, but it's very important I do this. They went for knockoff there, I could have gone for Sucker Punch, would have been a great play. And they are slowly chipping away my Skunk Tank. But as I said, I'm getting good damage off from them. In this position, I almost want to go to Nihiligo and start clicking uh, Meteor Beam 
Unfortunately, I think I need to keep Skunk Tank somewhat healthy for Aegislash. Or sorry, I need to keep um, Nyaligo away from Aegislash, that I meant to say. I'm going to soccer here in case they decide to try and knock me off. Though I think the play is always to recover here again. Because they are in the position where Sucker Punch can potentially KO. As they go into each slash, uh, good play. I click Burning Jealousy here again. If they do knock me out with a physical attack, they are going to take Aftermath damage, which is always quite good for me. Though, as I said earlier, I expect this to be sub Toxic, which can't do too much to the likes of Toxapex. As they go into Blacephalon, uh, that's okay with me. We'll see now, they're not leftovers, they're probably choiced, and I think they're going to want to trick me. So what I'm going to do, I really don't want anything losing an item on my team. Do I feel like Assault Vest is the most expendable? As they go back and disable, I good play. Now they can knock me off here to do a ton of damage. Hmm. They only have seven recover PP left. I don't particularly want my Crobat to be burnt uh, with Will-O-Wisp, so I'm going to go into Skunk Tank again. I'll just click Poison Jab. They only have six recovers left, so they are looking much worse. Now their knockoff unfortunately does a good chunk of damage to me. I click Sucker again here, as they recover and only have five left. Hmm. In this position, I think I'm okay to click Sucker. Swapping around does spread poison on their Pokemon and get a bit of chip on them, which is quite nice. And in this position, Corsola is more or less useless. Actually, I think I just go Crobat here and Taunt. It does give them an opportunity to go into Aegislash, uh, which is okay. Though I can't do too much to Aegislash, I can taunt them. As they actually taunt me instead. Great play. Now they're probably going to go for a burn. So I'm going to try to get my rocks down. They will knock off here. I'm not too worried about Nidoking being healthy. As now I have a Toxic on the Corsola. And the rocks give a lot of pressure to my opponent. Um, stops them from swapping out the things like Bacephalon. Um, it limits how many times they can swap into Corsola. And I'll click Earth Power here. That does an absolute truckload of damage. So this next Earth Power should pretty much pick up a KO on anything. As they stay in and unfortunately are gaining a small bit of HP back. But their recover is looking much much worse uh, PP wise. So they only have one left. And Nido King is still healthy. Healthy enough. I mean, I can take a hit. I can easily still click Earth Power Aegis Slash if it is um, sub toxic. It doesn't do too much to my team, as I said, especially things like Tox Specs. And once that's gone, Nia Ligo can pretty much sweep the end game, I think. I guess if it's Swords Dance, it can give my team a bit of trouble. And it doesn't seem to be Specs or Banded based on the fact it runs King Shield. It would be a strange move to run. As they're taking Blacephalon. I think I can always go into Nihiligo here. If they click Flamethrower, it won't do much damage. They click Psychic, great play. It does a lot. It does give me Skunk Tank, thankfully. Assuming they are Choice Scarfed. I'll click Burning Jealousy here again, as Corsola comes in. Now Corsola can potentially burn me, or they can go for Strength Zap. So I'm going to go into Crobat and just try Taunt. I just Taunt here. Now unfortunately Bicephalon is looking much more dangerous in the end game. I think because I'm max HP, I should live a single Psychic and I'm going to Roost on it, which should allow me to live one, especially if they go for Flamethrower or Shadow Ball. They go for Shadow Ball, and yeah, I can absolutely live that, I'll just Roost it off. 
as I get rid of Blacephalon, which is also a pretty big issue for my team. So now if they go into Aegislash, I'm going to taunt this to stop it from trying to get a sub up in my face. As they go to attack me with Iron Head. So they are indeed physical. And they're leftovers. So I think Pex is my play here. I can click Scald on this. Uh, potentially spread a burn. That or they have to swap out. And they're going to be taking a lot more damage. Uh, with Corsola thanks to my rocks and toxic spikes. As well as the crit on Scald which is pretty nice. So in this position I think I pretty much win the game. They can strength stop me here. Uh, but it won't get too much back. As they unfortunately disable my Scald which is not good versus Aegislash. I'll just spam Haze. Yeah, I'm okay spamming Haze. It doesn't allow them to Swords Dance. And I can always take out Skunk Tank later and just click uh, Sucker Punch. Because if they Swords Dance in my face, it, it does run the risk of being burnt by Burning Jealousy. As well as that, once my Scald is undisabled, I can click it again and potentially spread a burn. Unfortunately, this Pokemon is going to be slightly annoying to take down. Because it has leftovers, it will offset the damage from my Scald slightly. But I don't see a way the opponent can possibly take this one back. I'm pretty sure Toxapex completely walls out Mimikyu. Even if it's Sword Dance Woodhammer, it is poisoned, so it's going to be slowly taking ship, so I can just spam Haze. And there's nothing course that I can do if they want to try and click uh, Nightshade on me. I have a dual uh, Regenerator core in Slow King and Toxpex that I can just continuously swap out and do. So I probably shouldn't have let my Nido King get damaged in the earlier game. Uh, if it was healthier, I could take down Aegislash easier with just clicking Earth Power. But now it's unfortunately in the position where Shadow Sneak kills, so I did make the end game slightly harder on myself for no apparent reason really. So we ended up winning that game and we're going to pause till we find the next one. We'll be right back. So we have another game against Mono Ghost, which seems to be a popular type on the ladder at the moment. But unfortunately in this game they do have um, Gengar to absorb my Toxic Spikes as well as Golark, which is generally quite tough for my team. So uh, this one looks like it's going to be a bit more difficult. We're going to open up a Nido King here. I assume they want to open up a Golurk. As they open up Dragapult. Am I about to risk an Ice Beam? I think I am. They Psychic Fangs and kill me in one hit, unfortunately. Which is not good for me. Um, hmm. That is not good. That seems to be banded based on the damage. So I'm going to take in Skunk Tank. Now I expect Aegislash to want to come in on this. So I'll double into Pex. And hopefully burn it with uh, Scald, or at least get my Toxic Spikes down. So we click Scald here. If we get the burn, that would be ideal. And playing without Nido King is a lot harder, so I really did not expect uh, Psychic Fangs or Dragapult. They take in Spectriere, and I get the burn, thankfully, as they reveal themselves to not be leftovers. Now, they're probably Choice Scarf or Specs. I will go into Slow King as a pivot, as I should be able to eat most things they throw my way as they go for an agility. The fact I'm Assault Rest means I really do think I live this, and I'll click uh, Psy Shock here. Yeah, I live out of these. They get the Spadef drop, unfortunately, but I can just go into Pex here, who should be able to eat this. And I'll click Recover in their face. I think I'll just click Recover until they... Uh, they die from burn. So they seem to have been sub. Maybe they were nasty plot agility. As they go into Gengar. Now I definitely think a trick is coming out here. So I'm going to go into Skunk Tank. And try to trick the Black Sludge. Which I realise is a bad idea. Because they're a poison type. I realise as I said it. How bad of an idea that was. I could burn Jealousy here. Where do I click Sucker Punch? They're probably Choice Scarf. And I think they swap out here. I click jab as they go into Aegislash. So this could actually work in my favor if they want to Swords Dance in my face. I click Burning Jealousy here. Because of my Sucker Punch, it might um, persuade them to do that as they go straight for a Shadow Sneak. 
I burn in jealousy and I get a good chunk of damage off on them actually as I unfortunately activate weakness policy which is not good for me. So I'll click soccer here because the iron head will probably KO me in this position. I think soccer is the play. Now maybe I should keep my skunk tank healthy for something like Golurk. But this ends up giving me Aegis Lash, which is very good for my team. So I definitely have to keep this alive uh, for the likes of like, Dragapult and potentially Golurk. I think they go for an Earthquake straight up here, but they might go for a Stone Age expecting Crobat to come out. I'm willing to sack Crobat as they go for an Earthquake, which I good for me. I'll throw Toxic out. They go into Spectre. Uh, they do feign to burn. Which is pretty good for me right now. Uh, I'm in a decent position where Dragapult comes out. Now I think Pex is the play because I should be able to live a Psychic Fangs. I can also scout if they want to go for something like Dragon Darts, which is exactly what they do go for. I click Scald here. I burn would be great as they go into Gengar. I don't get the burn, but unfortunately I do get the Curse Body. Force me to swap out into something like Slow King here. As they go for a Shadow Ball, which doesn't actually do too much damage. Um, I could click Side Shock to pick up a KO, but I'm going to click Future Side here, which kind of um, pressures my opponent a lot. Now it is a roll if they KO, but I'm not willing to stay in, so I'm going to go to Skunk Tank. They're going to have to swap out if they want to keep their Gengar alive, which they should to avoid Toxic Spikes as they end up forfeiting. So that is going to be it for me today with Mono Poison. Uh, definitely let me know what you think of Mono Poison down below. Personally, it's always been one of my favorite types. It has been since I fought Koga in Hardcore Soul Silver. I thought like he made such a good use of it. Uh, so many like status conditions on the team, like Mastery and Confusion, Poison, uh, Paralysis, all that kind of stuff. So I kind of took that in mind. Uh, I wanted to spread status conditions of the likes of like Toxic on Crobat, uh, Burning Jealousy, Scald, Toxic Spikes. As well as kind of manipulating the battlefield with like Future Sight, Stealth Rocks, kind of um, pressuring my opponent heavily into when they can and can't swap into things and slowly whittling them down. And having just those kind of wall breakers in the team like Nido King and Night Illegal. So definitely um, a fun type to play and let me know what you guys think of it. Uh, that's going to be it for me today. I hope you enjoyed. The Discord is linked down below as well as the team. So definitely feel free to use those. Um, they're there for you to use. And if you did enjoy, consider leaving a like, subscribe, comment, all that kind of stuff helps me out so much. It, it means a lot to me. It really does. And with that, I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care, everyone.